Mary is my cousin and we grew up together. Uh, we were born five of us in our family and uh, three of us had sickle cell. By the time I started working, um, two, two of my cousins had already died from sickle cell anemia. In Africa, most children with sickle cell disease die before they're five. If they do survive, the average life expectancy is only 25 years. Um, sickle cell disease is an inherited um, disorder that affects the red blood cells and it's caused by a single gene mutation and um, it results in the formation of an abnormally shaped um, red blood cell um, which is like a sickle and, um, and this causes a lot of complications in the body. The burden of sickle cell disease in Africa is huge. It's estimated that about 300,000 children are born in the, in the world every year with sickle cell um, disease and probably over 70% of them are in Africa. And the tragedy is, in high income countries, because they detect um, sickle cell disease at birth through newborn screening programs, they're able to institute quite simple um, measures. And as a result, they've been able to reduce mortality by almost 90%. Whereas in our setting, the mortality is extremely high and it's estimated that between 50 to 90% of children die in childhood because of sickle cell anemia. Dr. Julie Makani is based in Muhumbili University of Health and Allied Sciences, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. She combines biomedical research with clinical work and academic responsibilities. I've known Julie Makani since she was quite a junior doctor working at Hammersmith as a student on the postgraduate course in medicine. And she turned out to be such a good student that she ended up as one of our senior house officers and went from there to Oxford where she trained in haematology, which of course has turned into her prize winning work on sickle cell disease in Africa. This uh, study that Dr. mccarney has been carrying out and wants to continue involves um, a therapeutic agent, hydroxyurea. What we're not clear about, though, is the mechanism by which that works. And so her research will not only inform us about environmental effects uh, and how they will also influence treatment, but actually could give hints into how this drug is actually working, um, which will help research in the future. One of, one of the key things is, is the numbers, and I think one, well, one of the things that Julie's work has done has been able to, to actually give the extent of the problem. And so we have had a lot of children dying from, from sickle cell disease. It was a silent problem. It was a problem of only a few people knew. We grew up with um, our cousins, and three of them had sickle cell anemia. All three of them had, had variable um, forms of the disease in terms of severity. So the youngest one of them had very, the very severe form, and he died um, when he was around 16. The, the two remaining ones, they were able to um, reach adulthood, get married, finish medical school, and then they died suddenly. And I think it's because of that personal experience, it's, it's just made me a lot more dis determined to try and understand why is it that some individuals have severe form of disease? Why is it that some of them have, have um, uh, mild forms of the disease? After suffering a severe stroke caused by sickle cell disease, 13-year-old Mercy is being treated by Julie and her team with hydroxyurea. Mercy started the school when she was five years old. One day she fell, she got a severe stroke. They found that her uh, vein, uh, the main vein, big one, is blocked. Whenever these sickle cells, according to the doctor, they are very stiff. Whenever they pass in the vein, they broke the, the vein. So the result is the brain tissue suffer. Mm -hmm. exactly. One of the side effects of hydroxyurea is that in a reduced to be low for. Mm. This is a, almost a, a year now since she has started this hydroxyurea. We still have the hope that uh, she is going to improve. Hydroxyurea is, is one of the few drugs that has been approved for use in sickle cell anemia. 
And it works by increasing the level of fetal hemoglobin and um, improving um, the hemoglobin level or improving anemia. In the womb, fetal hemoglobin carries more oxygen in the bloodstream than adult hemoglobin does after birth. Once a child is born, fetal hemoglobin is replaced by adult hemoglobin. However, fetal hemoglobin production can be reactivated with drugs like hydroxyurea, improving oxygen levels in patients with sickle cell disease. We know that it works in sickle cell disease outside of Africa, but we don't know whether it works in sickle cell disease in Africa. And if it does work, will it work as well as it works elsewhere? or will it be associated with complications? Siana Nkia is a PhD student working with Julie. She's researching how genetics influences the responses of sickle cell patients to hydroxyurea. Siana will receive specialized training in hematology, funded by the Royal Society Pfizer Award. So the Pfizer Award, I believe, is going to be a very important component to this study. Phytohemoglobin itself is genetically influenced. So my interest is to look at the genetic determinants of factors that make phytohemoglobin vary from one sickle cell patient to another. We know that hydroxyurea also has an influence on um, bone marrow, but the mechanisms for the influence it has is not really understood. As part of the Royal Society Pfizer Award, we want to explore or understand the hematopoietic response to hydroxyurea in patients with sickle cell disease who are taking it. The best thing is to remove the spleen and then start the hydroxyurea. I think that Julie McCartney's work exemplifies how science is becoming globalised. So she's using the Human Genome Project of understanding genetic variation in relation to sickle cell disease. She's using the state-of-the-art drugs. And I think this is a really splendid example of true capacity development in African science. I think it's difficult to think of a more worthy award of the Royal Society Pfizer Award. I think that this recognition to African scientists in this way and to be given an international award of this nature is, is fantastic. The Pfizer Award is, is very important to the Royal Society because it recognises quality work that's already going on with the intention of developing it for the future. It really allows African science to, to showcase itself and showcase itself through one incredible woman.